Ladies and gentlemen, meet the 2014 Acura RLX. The most luxurious, the most technologically advanced, and the most what, Nathan? The most expensive product Honda makes. The question is, at over $61,000, is it worth it? We'll find out next on the Fast Lane Car. Those are multifaceted jewel-like headlights, according to Acura. Unfortunately to me, they look a little bit bug-like. Now, the design language of the RLX continues the theme that Acura has had for the last 10 years or so, which is conservative and somewhat frumpy. Wouldn't you agree, my man? Yes, I would. And on top of that, I like the 19-inch wheels. They're beautiful. But it doesn't quite go with the rest of the car, and I think I understand what the problem is. If you look at the lines, everything's kind of straight and simple, and everything they've done here has been really subtle. When you look at the front end and the rear end, not so subtle. The side, very, very subtle. It just doesn't quite gel for me. What does gel for me is the inside of this car. You can see the quality, you can see the workmanship, you can see the fine leather, the fine wood. It's a beautiful interior. It's almost like a Swiss watch in here. Everything is just exactly precise and I think just finely tuned to the point of perfection. Do you agree, Nathan? I do, and check this out. I'm able to actually cross my legs in the back seat comfortably and I'm almost as tall as Roman who's 6'2", 6'3", with the hair. The thing is, which I really appreciate, Honda and Acura have gone through an awful lot of trouble to make every surface in here pleasant to the touch, including little things, just simply lifting up on the shade. This little part here, very comfortable, very nice to touch. I, I think it's one of the best Japanese interiors out there right now. A few days ago, Roman brought me into his garage to actually have a look at this car, because I haven't seen it up close. And there's something interesting he pointed out. Look at this and see what you see. What do you see here when you're looking just at this? Any guesses? Chevy Cruze. When you look at the side of the Chevy Cruze, it's almost exactly the same look. All right, so under the hood is a 3.5 liter V6 that puts out 310 horsepower and 272 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to a six-speed automatic Nathan with, that's my symbol for paddle shifters, and I think it revs pretty nicely, like a Honda. Oh yeah, it does rev nicely, but you know what, it's, I would only call the power adequate. It doesn't really feel like it's really moving in the seat of your pants. It just wants to kind of casually get you to where you need to be. Also, it's hooked up to an all-wheel steering system, which I think helps a car this size in parking situations, but as Roman will tell you, you don't really notice it. Yeah, it's called PAWS, Precision All-Wheel Steering. Very cute, Acura. But it's like my old 300ZX, which also had all-wheel steering. I can't really tell what it's doing. Maybe I'm not a talented enough driver. It's not like all-wheel drive, where when you're in snow, you can certainly tell the difference between front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. With all-wheel steering, yeah, it's there, but I can't tell. That's the computer, check it out. Kyle, come on over here, check this out. Watch. That is the computer not allowing it to rev any higher than that. Isn't that crazy? Today the cars are so technologically advanced that, well, the driver is almost a secondary thought in the whole driving process. And that's kind of a shame, isn't it, Nathan? From my standpoint, it is, but guess what? It's an Acura. All right, that's full bore, Nathan. Is that fast enough for you? Huh? Oh, you're accelerating. Hey, that's 60 right there, you know? I think we'll find out that it's actually faster than it feels when we do the zero to 60 test. Well, you know, a good measure of a proper luxury car is not to be tossed around, right? I mean, 
I did go to prom. Oh, that was so unnecessary, you jerk. <laughs> Dude. I'm doing a good measure of it. Oh, you said the good measure shit. of it. I was trying to be for once, not regular Nathan, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so how is the room back there? It's actually really good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm able to cross my legs. Size 13s fit pretty nicely back here, and there's enough room for three full-grown adults. I, you know, but, but Roman, my my thing is, I don't see. Uh, yeah, it's bigger, but I think the Acura TL gives you almost everything this gives you for much, much less. Well, from the inside, at least, there is a lot of attention to details. You can really see they sweat of the small stuff and that's what creates luxury, right? When it's that precise and when it's that well put together. And to me, this does represent, until the NSX comes along, the ultimate Acura. And there is a sense that that's what they've done. It drives fine, you know? It doesn't necessarily, you know, stir your soul, but it's not meant to stir your soul, right? It's a 310 horsepower Japanese luxury car. Okay, but let me ask you this. Between this vehicle and some of the Lexus that are out there, I think the Lexus is actually more passionate. Now think about that. Lexus, right? Yeah, Le Lexus has taken a page from the Germans and they are putting a lot more passion into their vehicles. Yeah, and on top of that, you can even feel it from the interior. This is a beautiful interior, don't get me wrong. It's one of the nicest ones I've seen from Honda Acura. But I think that Lexus, and that's who competes directly with this car, I think that they've actually done a better job for the complete package. I am impressed by just how smoothly this car drives. And if there's one word I would use to describe it, it is smooth. Everything here is smooth. Everything is easy, laid back. And that's not something that's very Japanese when you think about it. It might be Jamaican, but it's not Japanese. And yet they've managed to capture that kind of you know easy Sunday afternoon feeling when you drive it. Uh, it's a pleasure to get behind the wheel. I love the way that the seats cuddle my big American butt. And I also enjoy the way it steers. And I love the free revving Honda Acura engine. I, I think uh, there's more to this car than you give it credit for. Rastafari, man. I just chill it out with my thing in the back. Ah, uh, it is comfortable, I'll give it that. Alright guys, here we go, 0 to 60 in the Acura. Now keep in mind we're at a mile above sea level, which means there's less air density, which means things are slower. At least a second slower to 60. I've got it in sport mode, I've got the air conditioner off, and I'm gonna floor it. Here we go, it's floored. There goes the high revving Honda engine. And here comes 60 right there. It's about what I thought. 8.28 seconds. Um, you know, 310 horsepower, a very large Acura, and a mile above sea level, and you end up with 8.28 seconds. If you guys were at sea level, you could probably take a second away from that, which is respectable for a luxurious, sedan like this. Alright, that time I did it with a little bit of torque, you know, just give it a little bit of beans as the British would say before I let go of the brake, and it was a bit faster, 8.09, 8.09. So you can give it a little bit of gas and then let go of the brake and get a bit of a quicker time for all of you out there who are thinking about drag racing this Acura. And I'm sure there's legions of you out there considering that very possibility. Here comes the old lady now. I wonder. Oh yeah, she was a fast machine. No, she, <laughs> no it looked like it was really fast, so it sounded fast too. Just a tick over eight seconds. I thought it was a tick under eight seconds, but that's still not too bad, especially a mile over a mile. Above. Yeah, you know, I love the way Honda builds these high revving engines. That's what puts a smile on my face. I think you put a turbo on this and you've got yourself something. Yeah, we'll never do that. No, I know, I know. From behind the steering wheel, this car is phenomenal. It's comfortable, it's luxurious, it's roomy, it's everything you want a luxury car to be. But from the outside, it lacks visual passion. That's right, and because of that, on the TFL scale of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, I'm gonna give it a lease it. 
Oh, I wish I could say the same thing, but I can't because I'm gonna give this car a rented. The reason why, I don't see the logic in paying this much money for this type of car when the TL gives you almost everything and is a little bit more fun to drive. As always, this is Roman and Nathan saying thanks for watching and remember, check out the Fast Lane truck because we've got all kinds of reviews there as well. Ciao. Yeah.